everyone and welcome back. This is the Happy Cat here on our second episode of the Pathfinding mini-series. So last time, just to briefly review, we used a depth first search and breadth first search. You can see there's some new things added to our maze from last time, which I'll explain. But we used the depth first search, which we found was pretty inefficient. It would just explore the entire maze or the entire graph, and as soon as it finds the goal state, which is this orange square up here, as soon as it found the goal state, it would just return however it got there. And you can see this is probably not the shortest path to our goal. The breadth first search, however, has the property that if all edges have the same weight, so if when we're moving up, down, left, and right, if the cost of that movement is always one, it's always even, then it just so happens to return the shortest path, even though it's not really cognizant of like minimizing distance, if that makes sense. So you can see there's the breadth first search, there's the depth first search. Uh, breath first search looks it looks shorter to me just from a, <laughs> a visual perspective but now let's clear this and get a new a new maze now we're gonna look at what if we have weighted edges now in a game this might mean you know there's a tar pit or quicksand or something that you walk through that slows you down and maybe that's a hill you know like an incline and so now in our maze we have these red squares, the bright red squares, have a cost of three. If we want to move to a red square, we have to pay three movement. I don't know. You could even represent these as three white dots represented in one square, you know? So this might not be a perfectly rectangular environment. We kind of elongate it to match the distances of these squares. Or it could be a tar pit where we just move really slowly. Uh, the dark red squares have a cost of five to go through. So those are very slow. Now, as I mentioned before, the breadth first search, it'll return the shortest path if all of the costs are the same. So if we're just in a grassy field and there's no change in terrain at all, this would be our shortest path. Um, but you see it kind of goes through a lot of slow squares, like all up in this straight line. Now let's see what uh, an algorithm that does take that into account would find and yeah there is some difference see here it avoids it avoids some of these red squares by taking taking a bit of a detour so now let's let's see if we can get the cube yeah so now if we watch the cube move along kind of avoid some of those slow patches even though it has to hit a few uh, to get to the goal all right so let's take a look at how we would do this. So this is Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra, 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 Dijkstra. I've heard it in so many different ways. I've heard it in The Witcher 3 um, from so many different academic professionals and everyone has pronounced it and mispronounced it in every which way. Um, so <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so let's just step through the code and try to visualize how this is happening. So here I have a completely random graph that I just doodled up. And let's say this is our start state and uh, this is the goal. Okay. First, we're going to keep track of three things and we're going to set them up and initialize them. The first thing is this set of unexplored nodes. So this is everything that we haven't looked at yet. and of course, we're going to add everything to the unexplored set in the beginning because we haven't looked at any node yet. And then we're going to have this dictionary of distances. So this represents if you input a node, which we're keeping track of nodes based on their vector position. If you enter in, let's say, 101 that should get you back this int value, which represents the shortest distance we found from the start to 101 so far. Uh, it could be further down the line that we find an even better path and the distance gets updated throughout the algorithm. But that's what this dictionary does. Input a node, get the best distance so far to that node. And so initially, I think this is kind of interesting, uh, we're going to set every node's value distance value to int max. And now theoretically, when we draw this diagram, we're just going to say that that's infinity, just the highest number possible. Now these edges have weights, right? Like it costs one, it costs two to go from node to node. We're not changing the weights here. 
we're just saying the best distance to the node so far according to our reference is infinity so this infinity sign is next to the node it's not affecting uh, the edge weight at all so i'm going to put infinities next to all these to represent that we don't have a best distance so far so pretty much any distance we'll find will be less than infinity so that's how we update it it'll make sense as we go along i think and then finally we have a reference to our walkable positions so that's just everywhere that's not a barrier. Uh, so anything that's not a gray square. A white dot is fine. The slow squares are fine. The very slow squares are fine. We're just going to add that to our uh, list of valid nodes. Finally, we're going to, I think, uh, oops, I made, the, I made the parents variable global for some reason. That's why you don't see it here. Um, sorry about that. So the node parents, we're just going to initialize every parent to this kind of null value. In, in our environment, this is invalid. In others, that could be a totally valid uh, position for a node to be at. Uh, so we're just setting all of the parents to null, essentially, because we haven't uh, found any paths yet. And then finally, uh, to start, our distance from the start to itself, so this distance right here, is zero. So we're going to erase this infinity sign. We're going to say, okay, the start is zero. Okay, so we've set up our environment and we're ready to start looking at things. So while we have stuff in our unexplored set, we're going to keep looking at it. And we're going to select our current node from the unexplored set based on whatever node is unexplored and has the least distance so far. So in our case, every node is on the unexplored set and all of them are at infinity, all of their distances so far, except for this zero at the start here. So we're gonna say this is our cur. Start is our cur. And by the way, this is kind of a hacky way, I describe it up here, a hacky way of doing it. In the next video, we'll look at priority queues and A star. But for now, just think of it as we're just selecting the unexplored node with the least distance. Okay, now next, if this node is our goal, if this happens to be our goal position, we can stop and return it. Otherwise, which is our case right here, we're going to keep going. So first, we're going to remove it from our unexplored set. So in this case, for the sake of the diagram, I'm just going to call this A, and I'm going to sort of reverse it and keep track of the explored one. So we're going to have A as explored. In the reverse, everything else is unexplored. Uh, and then we're going to get our current walkable nodes. So in this case, we'll return, uh, let's call this node B, and node C, those will be our walkable nodes, and we're gonna look through each of these neighbors, each of the nodes next to A, and we're gonna see, okay, the distance to A is zero, plus the weight of the node. Well, for both of these, let's go one by one. For both of these, this dist right here will be zero plus one equals one. And so if that, that distance, that test distance, is less than the distance so far to the neighbor so right now both of these are at infinity which is the highest number so yes that is lower then we're going to update the distance so far to b to be one and same with c because it has the same numbers that'll be one and now these will have parents that point to a okay and a has just like a null parent Okay, now let's keep going. So we're done with A. And now we can move on to, let's say, um, B. Because we're going to take the unexplored node, B is unexplored, with the least distance so far. All of these are infinity, and you know C isn't very interesting to us right now. But let's say tiebreaker, B wins. It has uh, the least distance, B wins. Okay. So now B only has one possible way it can go, but we're going to keep looking at it. So B will add this to the explored set, or alternatively, we're removing it from the unexplored set. We're going to look at its neighbors. There's just one neighbor. We'll call him D. And the test distance to D, so distance to B, 
is 1 plus the weight to d is 4, so that equals 5. So now we can cross the infinity out, and this is 5. So we're also going to update d's parent. Now d gets a little bit more complicated. So we're going to, in this case, select c because we're going to take the one with the least distance, but we'll find that there's uh, no neighbor here at all to look at. So we don't do anything with C, but we'll add it to our explored set. Now, finally, let's get to D. Okay, so D, we're going to select D, and then we're gonna remove it from our explored set, from our unexplored set, or add it to our explored set. And then we're gonna look at D's neighbors. So let's take a look at D's neighbors. And we're going to say 5 plus, in this case, 2 equals 7. And so this is less than infinity. So we're going to update this. And then we're going to update this parent. And then we're going to go through to the next one, which happens to be our goal here. We'll just call the goal F. And we're going to say, OK, let's look at D is 5 plus 3 equals 8. 8 is the best we've seen so far. So we're going to update this. But the catch here is, unlike breadth first search, we're not going to stop just because we found the goal. We're going to keep going until we actually pull the goal off uh, from our unexplored set. So. We're going to keep this as is, and then we're going to explore, or not explore, we're going to look at g's distance. So that's also 5 plus 3 is 8, and we're going to update this parent. Okay, now we're going to go through to the node with the least distance, which in this case is now e, and we're going to put e in our explored set. We're going to look at the weight, so that's 7 plus 1 is 8. So we're gonna just keep on going through this. This is eight, and we're gonna call this EFGH, and this has a parent of this. So the distance so far is eight, and then we are going to look at the next best one, which right now they're all tied for the best distance so far, but this one is our goal. So let's take a look at the goal, and we find Oh my gosh, this is our goal position, so our shortest path is as such. But let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's pretend, let's pretend that this weight was 1, this weight was 1, this is 6, okay? So let's update these weights to reflect that. Because like I said, when I made this model, I had no clue <laughs> if it would actually turn out to be a good example, but now I'm seeing. Okay. So let's update these weights. So this was 5 plus 6, this would be 11, and then we update 5 plus 1 would be 6, and then plus 1 would be 7, plus 1 would be 8. So now we would say our shortest path has a distance of 8, and we would actually be taking this. Uh, whereas the breadth of first search might just say, you know, one, two, three, four, right? Instead of one, two, three, four, five, six. But in this case, the six node path is actually better because you're avoiding uh, this weight right here in the middle that's actually way slower than taking this detour around. So that's what Dijkstra's uh, algorithm does. And as you can see, like the other algorithms, you might not necessarily have to explore the whole graph. You can see that this node right here, we never looked at this one. We never looked at up here. Um, but at the worst case, you're looking through the entire thing because you may not find the goal along the way. That might be the last node you look at. And so that's where in the next video, A star uh, guarantees that you're looking at kind of a bounded region uh, going towards your goal. We'll do one more. So Dijkstra's algorithm finds this way to be the fastest given the slow parts 
Uh, the breadth first search has a more naive approach of just finding the least number of squares to get to the end. And then finally, the depth first search is just having a bad day. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope this helped out. Next time we'll do the A star algorithm. And then the last episode will be some more advanced and interesting things. If you have any suggestions for specific things in pathfinding you'd like to see, let me know. And most importantly, have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.